Hey guys, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I'm excited to share this DIY embroidered wood plaque with you guys. And I just think it's so cool. I am really excited about this. I partnered with Walnut Hollow to make this embroidered wood plaque. It is a botanical design and it's really simple. I mean, it's time consuming, but it's really simple. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Before we get into the video, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love if you did that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. Let's do it. All right, so for this project, you will need a wood round. I used this one from Walnut Hollow. I will link to it below. And then you will need some paper to sketch out your design. I used a pencil for this as well as the yarn that you are using to embroider. And I chose yarn over embroidery thread because it is thicker and so you need to make less holes to get the same impact. And then you'll need a drill to drill your holes and a darning needle with an eye big enough for yarn. You'll also need scissors. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is trace your wood round and sketch out your design. Once you've done that, then you'll want to put your design on top of your wood round and you'll want to press really really firmly as you trace out the main lines of your design. So I just did this again with my pencil and what this does is it transfers an indentation onto your wood round. Once you've done that then you can go again with your pencil and trace those indentations onto the wood round. Another way that you could do this is by using transfer paper which if you place that between your design and your wood round and trace firmly, it will actually transfer the color onto the wood round. Once you have done that, I just traced out the main shapes. Then you're going to want to take your drill and you're going to want to drill holes at all of the intersections and points. It's important to put a piece of scrap wood underneath your wood round so that you don't damage your surface. I used an extra wood round that I had used to experiment on the size of drill bit that I needed. I used a size 3 30 second drill bit. So you can see that I am just using my drill to carefully drill holes at all of the points and all of the intersections. When you are done this, then you can go ahead and you can draw in your extra lines. So for me, that's the veining of the leaves that I will be embroidering and you can drill holes for all of those. This will take a while. You basically wanna drill holes anywhere that you want a line to begin or end. When all of your holes have been drilled, you can use a fine grit sandpaper and just gently sand your surface to remove any splinters or rough places where the drill has been. Then it is time to get embroidering. If you've never embroidered before, this is a great way to start because you don't have to worry about the tension pulling your fabric. So all you're really going to be doing is threading your needle. And again, you're using a bigger needle with a bigger eye hole that'll fit the yarn through it. And you start from the back, pull it through, push it back through and tie it off to get it started. Once you have it tied off, you can go through the next one. So I like to do a back stitch where I poke my needle through the hole ahead of where I want the line to be and come back to the first point. And then I do that again. So I did the center vein of all of my leaves first, and then I took my time coming down the sides, doing the outline of the leaf and the vein at the same time. I outlined the leaf everywhere except for where another leaf overlapped. So you'll see on this leaf, there is kind of a gap in my edging, and that's because I'm going to do the edge of another leaf there, and I didn't want to double up. As I'm embroidering, I did find a few places that were not drilled all the way through, or as I was counting kind of how many holes there were for the different veins that I wanted, I noticed that I needed to drill a couple more holes, so you can go ahead and do that. The one thing that I did find is that I switched to a bit of a smaller needle because the holes are the perfect size to thread through and not see like giant holes behind your stitching, but after you've gone through the same hole like three or four times and you have the yarn in there three or four times, it gets really hard to push the needle through again. 
And by the end of this, I will say that my fingers were sore from getting the needle stuck and trying to pull it out. A couple tips if you are finding that tricky as well is to use a roll of tape and just tape around your needle so that you have a grip to pull it all the way through. I found the tape trick worked really well just to get a better grip on the needle as I was pulling it through after a stitch. The other thing that I did with this design is did a hole in the very edge of the plaque so that I could finish off the design nice and clean around the bottom of the plaque. I hadn't drilled these holes in the beginning, but I decided after the first leaf that this gave it a much cleaner look than if I just ended with the border of the leaf and nothing at the bottom. I did each leaf a different color and then I used the darker yarn for two leaves. But when you're done with each color, you can just tie it off on the back and then go ahead and start with your next color. If you run out of yarn partway through a leaf, that's no problem. You can just tie it off on the back and start again on the same leaf with another piece of the same color yarn. You will find that since the yarn is spun, it will get tangled up quite often as you're doing this and you'll have to kind of unknot it in, able, in order to pull it all the way through. That's totally fine, that won't wreck anything. I found the biggest trick to embroidering wood, which I've never done before, was figuring out where to put those holes to get a nice clean line. I wanted the leaves to have some interest and so I did put those kind of gaps in the leaves between the veins, just like you would see in a real banana leaf. Those ones I found a little bit trickier to embroider, so if you are worried about this, I would suggest skipping those little gaps in the edges of the leaves, but I do love how organic it looks having those. I would say my biggest tip for you is just to have at it, buy a few of the wood rounds. They are very affordable, so if you go through a couple trying to get it just right, you don't really need to feel bad. And don't worry about bringing your drill out halfway through your design because you're going to see something that you want to change a little bit and adding an extra hole in is no big deal. I would also give the suggestion to put on a really great movie. This took me a total of about an hour and 20 minutes start to finish. I did have a little kid right beside me helping, so I probably could have gone faster if I was sitting in front of a movie. It's not a super quick craft, but compared to traditional embroidery, which I'm not good at, it was really quick because you're using the thicker yarn and you're doing larger gaps in between all of your stitches, which you can do because it's a solid surface like wood and not a delicate surface like fabric. When you are done, you can go ahead and tie it off on the back and cut your strings nice and short, and then you can hang it using a 3M uh, picture hanging strip. I am planning to put mine in a little nook in my entryway, but I can't wait to get it up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time.